So the next, the second part of today's um, stream, uh, and we we'll probably have to go a bit faster on this one, is about type signatures. So again, we are still on the introduction. Um, and yeah, it's, it's based on the Thomas Hindley Milner type signatures or you probably heard it as Hindley Milner as well. There's probably a bit of a difference. Java to Haskell. <laughs> yeah, Java to Haskell. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to explain so much. Uh, I don't understand Haskell. Don't worry, nobody understands Haskell. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, we get these type signatures, and and the author of the articles use them, uses them a lot. So we go to the types file. We get these, for example. No? Uh, and this is basically. number we don't have integers in in typescript so something like this that's right it's a equivalent to something like that right uh, it takes one argument at a time um, takes an x then a y and then returns a number that's kind of all there is to it um Yeah, we, we can talk a bit about what when something is current and when it's not. Um, but then we have this seek with function, and we don't need to end it ourselves, but we actually need to add the types. So this is a B, I think. So this is function. A D, I think Ray of A's Array of B's and then we return an array of C. Sorry, this function here was correct also. So that's the seek width. Um, okay, so we kind of went ahead because the the book first that gives us the sorry, not the book, the article that gives us the example and then it explains um, how these um, lowercase uh, letters are type signatures right uh, sorry are type variables uh, so this is kind of what we got here type strip is much more verbose when it comes to type signatures uh, it's something i personally like quite a lot but what can you do you see we have the a the b and the c then we have the list of a's uh, a list of B's and our return thing is the, 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 the C. Um, and one thing is that in, in this um, method, it's not a method, how is it? Like a type system or? something like that we don't need to define the generics right if it's a lowercase letter it's generic and it's a type variable and this a means that this is the same as this a so we have a list of a's uh, that the list goes inside instead of like this as in typescript which is the same thing as here we define these type type variables here and then this a is the same as this one, right? So the only information we have about these types is that the 
they are um, they are the same. We don't have any more information. So in a sense, we cannot do anything else. We cannot do so here, for example, where we access the x access ith element, we cannot do dot something. We don't have information. We just know the this is of type a, and that's it. So, and this is how how basically the polymorphism comes in play. Like they they can be anything, so we don't have any concrete information. This is fully fully polymorphic, if you may say. Then. You can do zip with. So basically, it takes. I think if we use pipe. Sorry. Uh, pipe. So if we use pipe. Uh, it's probably not going to work so nicely because pipe takes so th the thing is TypeScript is able to infer from left to right uh, so if we pass this as the last argument then it's not able to infer these type variables uh, known and unknown if we pass the last argument which we can pass it with pipe is able to infer oh it's still not able to infer okay i thought it was going to be able to infer them uh, but we can say this is a number first and uh thing second but then it get it no okay and then we don't need pipe. Don't need pipe. So what is zip we doing is just putting these two lists together, one element at a time, and the function that we pass is the one that will put them together. So in this case, comparing if the length of the string in the second is the is greater than the number on the first list, one at a time. So two zero two, we get true and false. The length of this string is four is by greater than three. The length of this one is 3, is lower than Okay. For the second, I thought there was a problem with the stream, but like all good. Any questions, chat? I'm gonna keep spamming this. So you ask questions. Um, yeah, then we can define like the type signature of filter oh again <laughs> sorry um, all right so filter takes um, and any a e is the function that goes from an a to boolean and then get the list of A's and we'll return a list of A's. So, yeah, here the difference is that Boolean uh, is a concrete type, right? Where the A is a generic one. So it's, yeah, it's probably less, need to like, put less less 
time into this article because um, yeah, we have types in TypeScript. So the, the author of the articles uh, is using these types as a reference when they write JavaScript to kind of have the types as a reference. Uh, what, this is interesting. So um, we were talking, I, I was mentioning that this A, this B, this C, we know nothing about them. Uh, and because we know nothing about them, we cannot operate on them. Uh, besides what these functions do, where they take a function that knows how to operate on them and, and, and we provide the function and now we say that this concrete type of the A uh, is, is number and the B is string and the return the C is boolean so then the first list has to be a list of numbers and the second is a list of strings and we return a list of boolean but zipwidth cannot operate with this list um, where filter, now that we give a concrete type, filter can, can use the boolean, right? Because it knows that it's a boolean, so it knows that it can like, compare it, for example, and that's what filter does internally. Um, so, but is there some sort of middle ground where we can say, okay, this type, I know something about it. So you can do some things, but it's not just a string, it's something more generic. So, and and yes, this is where the author introduces the type constraints. So you see that before we have arrows, uh, but now we have this like fat arrow, which is not the same uh, uh, as the TypeScript one. This means that everything on the left has the constraints. So now it's not any A. It's an A that has an EQ constraint or an equal constraint or as it was uh, before a setoid, which uh, is uh, another name for, for EQ. And this means that this A, we can compare it. So this is called equals. It takes two A's and we are able to return a bool. If the function was like this, we wouldn't actually be able to compare them. At least not in the sense that we're talking here where we need to know about the type to compare them. Yes, in JavaScript you can compare two things. That's it, uh, by reference, but we're talking about by structure, not by reference. So if we try to implement this, um, this equals, right, with the A and B, which is type A as well, and we want to return boolean um, and we actually need to make sure that they are structurally the same not by reference we can only return true or false here because we know nothing about a and b but once we add the constraint then we know that we can compare them because these two things can be compared and they are of the same type of A. So that's what the con constraint says. Um, and we'll look more into detail in, in further articles, but this is implemented. Uh, we'll, we'll skip the, the prototype one, which is like this wiggy arrow. Um, because we we won't be using prototype, but this is in the case that instead of doing equals first second, you do first that equals second. Uh, but yeah, about the constraints, um, FPTS, where is it? FPTS does it by, so these things are called type classes. Um, and Type classes are some sort of an interface, uh, if I may say, that's very, um, yeah, it's not, it's not the right definition, but here there is a good article that explains them in the context of, of TypeScript. Uh, 
but this is a way to do polymorphic polymorphism in, in languages like Haskell and, and Euroscript where you your type implements a types class um, so it has certain capability um, so yeah the fact that your type implements EQ means that you can compare it and what what happens in the way um, they are implemented in uh, FPTS is that you have like an instance which implements the queue so we could we could define the instance now so for example sorry type eq of a will be something like this but there will be an equals implemented where if you have an a and a b both of the same type a you are able to return boolean, right? So, how do we implement, for example, number EQ? And this is EQ of number. So, well, we need to define the equals. Uh, it takes an number a and a number b and we just do the strict equality a equal to a equals to right so then if you have a function that needs to compare elements by equality you could say that this function for some reason you need to com com compare them Marin, we take some a, like I want a, which is of type a and b, type b, a, a as well, sorry, but this, this could be more like x and y, right? And then it could take the instance, so eq, which will be the eq for a, so the eq for this type, so we define it here, and then it means that now we can do eq equals of x and y and this will return a boolean but it's x and y so this is kind of how we do type classes in TypeScript which is language that doesn't implement them uh, in languages that do implement them this is done dynamically by the language where well, this patches to the right implementation so we'll say equals x and y and the equals knows that it needs to use the number instance because x and y are numbers and they do have the instance. yeah any questions that questions but yeah, if you read, the, if you want to, to, to read more about that, this, this article by Paul Gray, uh, part of the P-Slack, it's a, it's a good one. That explains every type classes and we're, we're going to use to be seeing a lot of type classes. So like Cytoid, which is the Q that we just saw, or like all of these are type classes and then our types can implement those type classes. That's when get really interesting because like your list can have uh, can be a functor but all the types can also be functors so they behave the same way and, and you can reuse that and write your application like that so that's all for today um, that was the second argument which I forgot to share the link in chat um, yeah I see no questions so Either nobody understood anything or everybody understood everything. <laughs> um, for the next one, which is going to be next Thursday at the same time, we're going to be taking a look at the EQ and the ORD, so these two, so the article 3 and 4. And 
don't get confused because when you open the old one it's actually 3.5 but yeah, three and four so those are the two we'll be seeing the next time yeah 